Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford, I'm from the Melbourne Fire Brick Company. Today I want to show you how to fire up your pizza oven efficiently uh, and to get it really good and hot so that you're ready to cook pizza. Uh, pizza cooks best temperatures between 350 and 400 degrees, which is bloody hot. So we really need to get the oven uh, fired right up. Our oven, uh, the one we're using here today, uh, we must thank Dale for letting us be here. This is Dale's oven, it's a D105. It's a 105 centimeter internal diameter brick oven. It's going to take about two and a half hours to get all the way up to full pizza temperature. Uh, but what we want to share with you today is just some techniques for make it easier to get the fire going. So the method I'm going to teach you today is what I call the raft technique. Uh, and that is we're going to build a normal TP style campfire, the kind of fire that you've probably built your entire life. But we're going to build that on a raft of timber that we can then push back into the oven and get right to the back of the dome because that's where it's going to burn the best. You can see how deep the oven is. I can't just reach in and build a TP fire right at the back of the dome. I'd have to crawl into the oven to do that. So building it on a raft of timber gives you the ability to move the fire exactly where you want it without it falling apart, uh, which basically would make the fire go out. Uh, so we'll start with the timber that we're using. Now, this is beautiful quality dried red gum. Uh, you can get this in all throughout Victoria, New South Wales, uh, most of Australia I believe. We always try to burn quality hardwood wherever we can. The reason for that is, number one, there's a lovely flavour from it. Uh, red gum has a beautiful flavour so it gets right into your food and, and it tastes delicious. Secondly, it burns really well and it burns down to dust. So you don't have to empty coals out of your oven every few days, you'll find that maybe once in six months you will sweep out dust. Uh, a cubic meter of red gum burns down to around half a bucket full of dust. Uh, so that's that's just another, another benefit to it as well. Now we're going to use big pieces to build the raft. So we've got quite large pieces here. I've picked these pieces because they're sort of straight and they're relatively square so they're going to sit nicely on the, on the floor of the oven and not tip which would cause my TP to fall over. So I put one across the back uh, and then usually four maybe five depending on how how wide they are going in like that. Okay now I might flip this one so you get a bit more space and then and this is an important part we get one piece that covers the entire front. So that when I push on this piece, it pushes all of them together and they slide smoothly into the oven with the, the fire uh, on top of them. Uh, so with those built, we can now comfortably out here make our fire, we'll get some paper. I've just got butcher's paper, you could use newspaper, whatever you have. Got our little pile of paper, and then we, we start with kindling. Now, I'm using uh, pine. Uh, you'll find if you're trying to get your hands on some little bits of pine offcuts, pretty much every framing company or truss company puts their offcuts out the front of their factory in, uh, in a big crate uh, for people to come and take to use for ex exactly this. Uh, you don't want to burn treated pine or anything with any chemicals in it, anything that's got paint uh, or oils on it stick with just nice, simple, dry timber. Uh, so yeah, this is just untreated pine. We're not gonna burn a lot of this. This is just sort of to get the, the fire up and going because this burns really, really well. Just making sure that I don't build it too high so that when I push it in, it hits the brick arch. So just make sure you come in under that arch. Like I said before, we wanna burn red gum. We've got our paper, we've got our uh, pine kindling on the fire. Next thing is to start with actual red gum timber to burn. This is uh, sort of the size that I recommend you cut it down to. Uh, so red gum typically comes in fairly large chunks and if you try and burn those straight away, you'll, you'll never get anywhere. You really want to cut it down into smaller pieces. So I've, I've cut these down fairly small. You could go smaller, you could go slightly bigger, uh, but something in, in this sort of region. Uh, and then I'm gonna 
stack those on here. There are a couple of other benefits to uh, to this method. Obviously, one of them is I can build my fire out here where it's comfortable. I'm not reaching in trying to set up a fire back inside the oven. Uh, but one of the other things that it does is it will make the fire go to just take off a lot faster because we're insulating the fire from the floor. We've got this lovely layer of, of timber between the cold floor of the oven uh, and, and the fire, which allows it to really get up and going a lot faster. We've got our fire all set, ready to push into the oven. So remember, I'm gonna push this front piece of timber. I'm also just gonna put my hands around the sides just to steady these two and stop them from wandering out, which would cause uh, the fire to fall apart. So just push slowly, don't shove it in. So we push the fire in as far as we can with our hands. Uh, and this is also it's probably as far as I really want to reach to, to light it. So now I'm going to get this lit and then I'm actually going to push it further in. I'm going to get it as close to the back as I can. Now what I want you to see is this lovely layer of smoke here. Uh, you'll, you'll find your oven will only smoke for a few minutes right at the start when it's just starting to burn. But look, we've got all this fresh air coming in and then this beautiful layer of smoke getting drawn up into the chimney. This is the design of our oven. We actually have our chimney opening. The, the throat of the flue is the full width of the opening. So the smoke has nowhere to go except up the chimney. Look at that, that is gorgeous. So fire's been burning now for a little bit over 20 minutes. Uh, we've added a few small pieces of red gum to that initial fire that we built uh, just to keep it going. And what we're waiting for is for it to burn down into the, that raft of logs that was underneath it, which it basically, it's basically reached that stage now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flip those logs up against the back wall. We've flipped all of our logs up into position so they're all now tilting up against that back wall where they're going to burn really efficiently uh, and at this point we can actually start adding more wood now you look at that and you think well that's a pretty big fire right we're actually going to build that probably double the size really going to get it burning hard because what we're trying to do is bring all of this brickwork which weighs nearly a ton we're trying to bring all of that up to 400 degrees so we need to put quite a bit of energy into this oven, uh, quite a bit of heat into it to get to that temperature. The thing is, once we've done that, this is going to stay hot for a very long time. We're gonna be able to cook our pizzas. You're gonna find we're actually gonna cook some other things as well. And the following day, we're gonna actually come back tomorrow morning and we're gonna do some bread because there'll still be so much residual heat left in this oven. You know this already, if you've got a wood-fired oven, you'd be well aware of this. We're not gonna be cooking from the direct heat of the fire. We're cooking from the residual heat that's stored in the floor and the dome the walls uh, the, in these fire bricks. a little bit over an hour now. We flipped all our logs up from the from the raft and they just took off and we've added, we've been adding more logs to it since then. Uh, I'm not trying to get a little fire going here, I want to get a really good hot fire going. And as you see in the background, we've got that. That's, to me, is about the perfect size fire. We want to keep feeding that so that it doesn't die down because again, we're trying to get to that really high temperature. I can see that some of the soot has actually started to burn off the dome, which means that areas are actually starting to get over 350 degrees. We're gonna keep feeding that. Uh, so I'm gonna add a little bit more timber. Again, we're using our beautiful dry red gum uh, and decent sized chunks. You can order it delivered to your home uh, in most places and it's, when you when you order it, ask for double split red gum, which means that they'll actually take the original size and they'll split it down again. 
Usually bread gum is used in wood heaters, and in, in a wood heater you want quite big pieces. But for a, a pizza oven, you want about half that size. And so those split it down to pieces about this big for you. The fire's been burning now for about an hour and a half. Uh, it's getting really good and hot in the oven, which is excellent. Uh, but I'm actually getting quite hungry. So I'm gonna put it in a tray of chicken wings just to cook while we're waiting for the, or the oven to get all the way up to full pizza temperature. We're now nearly at the two hour mark. Fire's burning really, really well. Uh, we cooked some beautiful chicken wings before uh, with the heat that was there. And what I want to do now is I actually want to move the fire around. So I've heated up the dome. The, the dome is basically clear. We've burnt off nearly all of the soot, which means we've got the dome really good and hot. It's well above 350 degrees. But what I want to make sure of is that the floor is also hot. Now the floor heats up in a couple of ways. First way is radiant heat from the, the dome of the oven pushes down and it shines down on the floor and heats up the floor tiles. It's not a very effective way of heating the floor tiles. Uh, the best way is conduction. And that means having the fire on top of the floor tiles to soak heat into them, really heat them right up. Uh, so to do that, we actually need to migrate the fire around and put it on the different areas of the floor so that we heat uh, all of the floor up. Don't have to leave it there very long. You might move it over to one section and just leave it there for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Then move it over to the next section. We've left the fire over on the left hand side now for about 15 minutes, uh, which means we've really heated up that section of the floor. We've soaked heat right down through the fire brick tiles into the refractory castable layer below. So that section of the floor is nice and hot now. We want to do the same thing on the right. Fired the oven now for just a fraction over two and a quarter hours, and we are ready to cook pizza. Uh, the oven is really good and hot. It's, probably, it's well and truly over 400 degrees in there, but there'll still be a lot of ash left on the floor, the fine dust. And if I put a pizza straight on top of the fire bricks, which is what I'm gonna do, uh, it's gonna pick up that dust and I'm gonna end up eating it, which would be unpleasant. So we're gonna use this natural bristle brush. The head is replaceable. So every time we use the, uh, the, the brush, it's gonna singe these, these fibers ever so slightly, but we can pop that head out and replace it later on once it wears down. We're done with cooking for the day. Uh, so we're gonna put the door in, we've put that all the way in and we've sealed off this chamber. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow morning and we'll see what temperature it's at and we'll do a little bit more cooking then. Right, we're back at Dale's. Uh, it's almost exactly 12 hours since we put the door on the oven and we've come back this morning after a bitterly cold night to see the oven is still at 200 degrees. Uh, now, when you consider that last night we put the door on, that was 260 degrees, that, that's a 60 degree temperature drop over 12 hours, uh, which is considerable when last night it was like negative two degrees. 
so the ovens really held its temperature really well overnight, which they do because they're incredibly well insulated. I really want to do a nice loaf of bread. So I made some, uh, made some dough this morning, uh, which has been rising for the last few hours, and we're gonna put that in and, and bake it. And that'll probably take around 45 minutes. By the end of that bake, the oven will probably still be sitting at 140, uh, maybe 130, 140 degrees. There's still a whole lot more than we can do with that. You could bake a cake, you know, you could look at you know making a delicious pie or, or maybe a slow roasted leg of lamb for lunch. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with the full heat cycle of this oven. And uh, given that you've you know put in a bit of effort, some time and some firewood to get it all the way up to temperature, you might as well use the full cycle that you've got. We'll get the bread in the oven. To the end of this video on how to fire uh, up your wood-fired oven. Uh, we've cooked chicken wings, pizza, steaks, we've, we've roasted some pumpkin and some bacon uh, and this morning we've come back the ovens dropped from 260 degrees to 200 degrees and we baked a loaf of bread. Look at the thermometer it is now 175 degrees in there uh, so if we wanted to uh, cook something else in fact Dale, the owner of this uh, beautiful place, is actually going to be doing a lovely roast pork later on today. Uh, we do want to thank Dale for letting us be here. Uh, and uh, guys, if you have any questions at all about firing your oven, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us.